Hi guys! In nature, mantis activity probably peaks between August and September. Because now they are literally everywhere. And this one has turned out to be one of the bravest representatives of its species. Not every mantis will hunt a frog. And if the tree frog manages to bounce aside at the last moment, but for such courage it is definitely suitable for us. So we've taken it into the hangar. It immediately begins to examine its surroundings with interest. For a human mantis is not dangerous and easily fixed with just two fingers. But in the insect world, it is at the very top of the food chain. As we are hospitable, it is our duty to feed the praying mantis. But like a true predator, it won't. Fortunately, we know under which stump we can find a lot of larvae. Perhaps the mantis will not be full eating just one insect, but this remains to be seen. The predator itself is comfortably settled in the terrarium and is waiting to be fed. As soon as the larva is in its territory, the mantis literally immediately notices the prey. There's a reason why its head rotates 360 degrees. Nothing escapes from it. First it stares at the larva, and then it looks at us sharply. As if are you serious? Am I supposed to eat this? But still hunting instincts has taken their course, so the mantis gets on the glass, takes an observation post and begins to scrutinize its potential victim. Such an extremely sluggish hunt begins in this way. Here it seemed to us that it attacks, but finally it just passes by. Anyway, we won't bore you with expectations, it doesn't eat the maggot. Maybe it is the wrong smell, or maybe it is something else. As there is such a result, we've decided to replace the maggot with a grasshopper. The grasshopper is omnivorous and also eats other insects. Therefore, the grasshopper might also be interested in a green predator as food. Or maybe it will be the quite the opposite. Who knows? We're about to find out. Instead of walking on the floor, the mantis moves along the walls of the terrarium. Apparently, it's easier to track its prey. And this approach has proven its effectiveness. When the grasshopper decides to jump to the roof, the mantis easily catches up and grabs the insect. However, the grips turns out not the most successful, the thorns on its paw get caught on the net and it has to let the prey go. The mantis has taken a wait and see approach. This time it is much more successful. As soon as the grasshopper comes within the desired distance, the mantis immediately grabs it. I must say, it's eating its prey with such appetite. and then it just bites off the head and throws the body away. Or rather, it falls out on its own. All that's left is a paw, but the predator has eaten that too. It is quite a creepy sight, because even without the head and one of the legs, the grasshopper still continues to move. Yes, the world of insects is quite cruel and rarely anyone is able to live to old age in it, and this has provided the already short life cycle. More often they become prey for birds, reptiles, rodents, or like now the praying mantis. Now it's time to set the two predators against each other. The next insect to go into the terrarium is the dragonfly. Like the praying mantis, it also eats exclusively insects. Two insect-eating creatures in the same area is intriguing enough. Someone's about to find out what it's like to be on the other side of the dinner table. So let's get started. The mantis has already settled down under the ceiling as usual. The dragonfly, on the other hand, despite its wings, is still down below, assessing the situation. But suddenly, what's going on? Apparently, the praying mantis has decided to come down. And now, while the dragonfly is unaware, the mantis is getting closer. But the dragonfly is not so simple, it's not a grasshopper after all. Smelling something wrong, it just flies away. Yeah. 
The dragonfly once again decides to tease the praying mantis. At first it is sitting, flapping its wings, and then it decides to make a circle around the terrarium. That's when the predator catches it. Sometimes even wings can guarantee no safety. After that not the most pleasant process for observation begins, the mantis meal. I must say that this time everything is used except wings. The fact that the mantis does it all in a head-down position, like some kind of creepy monster, adds some creepiness. It takes it about three minutes to completely eat the dragonfly. Although it literally looks like a single moment on the time-lapse. Now it's time to briefly travel back in time. Last year, we witnessed a praying mantis walking around our apiary. It wasn't just walking around, it was hunting bees. Mantises are such rugged and fearless creatures that they can afford to attack bees just outside their house. You've probably already guessed where this is going. So, in our glass octagon, we put about a hundred bees. And to give them more motivation to protect someone, there's also a queen bee. Naturally, the bees have surrounded their queen and won't leave her aside. They clean it, look after it, and generally fulfill the function of guarding it. However, there are only a couple of dozen bees around the queen at a time. The others try to lift the terrarium lid. What about the praying mantis? We brought it to the glass outside, it looks at once with interest, and then turns round and is like fuck it. But there's no way to back down, so onwards to the bees. Its arrival causes quite a stir. One of the bees even sits right on top of the mantis. We don't know what signal it gives to the others, but all the bees go crazy. A terrible buzzing sound is heard and the bees begun to ventilate the terrarium space with their wings. Although the mantis does not show any signs of aggression, some bees start attacking it. It doesn't like that. Suddenly it catches one bee and throws it away. Then it moves to its favorite place, the ceiling and throws another bee in the same way. As a result, it's hung on two legs among the bees, wobbling back and forth and thinking, why am I doing this? By the way, the queen bee passes literally in front of it. That's all very interesting, but what's the action? Here it is. The mantis manages to grab one bee and a struggle ensues, but the honeybee still manages to escape from the clutches of its opponent. Then another moment happens when the green predator gets into a fighting stance and tries to grab a bee. By the way, bees do not really want to attack the mantis, even to protect the queen, but actively prevent it from climbing back to the ceiling. Here, the queen bee manages to skip just millimeters away from the mantis and it is not even guarded at that moment. Although no, immediately after this incident, there is the first bee attack. It shouldn't have done that. When the mantis starts eating the bee after a brief struggle, something strange happens, the sisters do not react to this event at all and do not even try to fight off their colleague. In their hive, they work as a united organism, but here they do not even come to help. And here they have a significant advantage in numbers. But the moment's gone. And while we are shooting and observing, many bees from the hive have already flown to the smell of their queen. That can only mean one thing, it's time for it to go home. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. It's time to go home. Although the praying mantis probably won't be too upset about it. That's it for today. Bye bye.